malnutrition amongst uh, along with the supportive measures uh, including mal, uh, micronutrient needs now i uh, welcome dr anju seth and dr kalpana datta for further uh, to take it further thank you thanks a lot uh, i th- i am really very thankful to dr anju seth and uh, dr kalpana datta for taking out their important time from their uh, precious time for giving this uh, precious their precious time for the import, uh, this important session thank you kiran sir can we quickly run the retest lots of uh, background noise yes ma'am in the training ma'am sorry बैकग्राउंड नॉइज इज कमिंग मैम आई एम इन ट्रेनिंग आई एल म्यूटेड एज सुन एज द सेशन सॉरी kindly note your attendance is connected or is uh, uh, related to your pretest and posters so please be present throughout the session till the end of the session Thirty percent attended. Attended. So we can we can end the e poll now. Okay. I now request Kalpana ma'am to please continue the session. Ma'am, is the screen visible? No, Shweta ma'am. Sorry for the technical glitch. Uh, Kiran, please confirm if the recording is in progress. Yes. Is the screen visible now? No. Oh, can you please share the screen from your end? Okay. Sorry, I have tried again. Is it visible? 
No. I'm sorry to keep you waiting. Uh, Kiran, please share the screen from your end. Screen is visible. Kalpana ma'am, is this screen visible to you? I am unable to see the screen as a co-host. Ma'am, please confirm if the screen is visible. Screen is uh, visible. It will be run by your side. You will run. Oh, yeah, side. it will be. It will be run by Kiran. Okay, okay, no issue. Okay. It is visible. Okay, okay. Uh, can you please uh, uh, go to the objective slide? Okay, no issue. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. And thank you, Dr. Sheta. And uh, thank you all the entire team of uh, ITIC. And thank you, NACO, for giving me this opportunity to speak on such an important topic. And also, I would like to thank the Dr. Puri, sir, for giving his kind words. Now, I'll uh, start talking on advanced med. I think questions are visible uh, now. Okay, session subject. So my topic is advanced management in a child living with HIV or less than five years of age. So what are the objectives of this session? What are the ma major causes of morbidity and mortality in children? A package of advanced disease of management in children under five years of age. So that's a good package means a combination of all uh, that should be provided to a children who are suffering from HIV and who are less than five years of age. Treatment of tuberculosis in children living with HIV, assessment of nutritional status, and nutritional management of HIV will be uh, dealt by Dr. Anju. Next slide, please. So uh, advanced management in children uh, living with HIV less than five years of age, I'll be discussing the different aspects of this. So why is important why we have taken the HIV over uh, less than five years in a separate uh, uh, project in a separate uh, session or separate uh, chapter because you know they are more prone to develop a severe immunosuppression and more prone to develop high mortality and morbidity. So there's a study that has shown 80% of children less than five years uh, have a severe immunosuppression except who are already receiving ERT or clinically stable. Uh, all children less than five years considered uh, it is all when they are considered to, as a, taken as a grant, granted that they are having an advanced disease. So any children less than five years you must suspect baby is having an advanced disease. Then we see whether baby is left out um, again, uh, lost to follow up and uh, again re-entered in the treatment or having uh, clinically stable taking ERT for like more, more than one year or the child is more than two years. All those criteria will follow. But whenever we see a child with uh, um, HIV, if she, she or he is less than five years, will take it as granted that there might be an advanced disease. So because it causes high mortality. Next slide, please. So there's a, one study from South. It is when shown uh, less than five years mortality is 20 per eight person. And if it, there's a uh, stays uh, like uh, stage three and four, then mortality is increased to 38.6 percent. And when there's a severe immunosuppression, then mortality is near 35 percent. But in case of uh, only SAM with a child with uh, HIV, it can um, increase the mortality up to 22.3%. Next slide, please. Okay, so what do we mean by advanced HIV disease? First, whenever we take uh, any child below five years having HIV, take it as an advanced disease. Now see what is the criteria. If they're newly diagnosed, that means they are having an advanced HIV disease. If there is severe, uh, severe immunosuppression following treatment failure, that means uh, children who are on antiretroviral therapy previously and uh, have a treatment failure. That is, um, that cases will take as an advanced HIV disease. Or re-engaging with the care after treatment interruption, that means loss to follow up was there, irregular treatment left out, and then again came into the, um, the process or our program, then we Take is granted that the baby is having a severe HIV uh, immunosuppression and having an advanced HIV disease. But children older, older than two years of age, 
and a stable on at least for more than one year. So any children above two years, now we see whether the baby is on ERT or without ERT. If it's on ERT, then you, you first see the age, whether the baby is above two years or not. Second, see whether the baby is taking ERT or not. Then see whether how long baby is taking ERT. So if baby is taking ERT for more than one year, then see the, how the baby is. Baby is clinically stable or unstable. So if the child is stable, taking ERT for more than one year, and the age is more than two years, we can say the baby is in a stable condition. And we can exclude this group of children from advanced HIV disease. Next slide. And major causes of morbidity and mortality, if you see, there's nothing new. These are the causes of morbidity and mortality in under five in any age group, uh, under five in any type, without even a compromise or immunocompetent. Uh, uh, so in the CBA, but in case of immunocompromised, the mortality the percentage of mortality will be quite high, the percentage of morbidity will be quite high, and the severity in case of morbidity will be quite high. So even the pneumonia in uh, like a bacterial pneumonias like a streptococcal pneumonia, staphylococcus pneumonia, including the pneumocystis gerovesi pneumonia that can cause increased morbidity and mortality. Artibocrisis in any form is also increased the morbidity and mortality. Blood stream infections, it's very common because there's a slightest infection and then there's a chance of septicemia in these particular children because they have immunosuppression. So even a skin inf infection, any pyogenic infection in some way that will uh, have a, a spread throughout the body and and can cause septicemia. So blood stream infection can also kill the children. Then diarrheal diseases was quite common diarrheal diseases, but uh, in, if it is the immunocompetent, then only you can treat the child and there's increased morbidity and all, uh, usually they don't cause uh, mortality in case of immunocompetent, but in this severely ill child or less than five years with HIV, diarrheal disease itself can cause uh, mortality and can kill the child. So it's very important. And of course, the severe acute malnutrition, we know the immunosuppression, uh, HIV itself is an immunosuppressed disease and severe acute malnutrition is a similar uh, immunosuppression can cause as it is due to HIV. So this is a double sword. And there is a HIV and there is a severe acute malnutrition that will add up the mortality in children, especially below five years. Next slide. So we see what are the um, percentage of mortality in uh, um, HIV, uh, HIV in, um, below five years. This is a 38 percent is contributed with the pneumonia. As we know, 30, so pneumonia is the commonest cause of death in children below five years. And it may be uh, staph pneumonia, streptococcus pneumonia, means any other bacterial pneumonia, including the pneumocystis carinae or gerovesi pneumonia. And 20% um, is contributed by the tuberculosis, any type of tuberculosis, especially uh, the uh, pulmonary tuberculosis and CNS tuberculosis can contribute to mortality. Then um, uh, like uh, blood stream infections leading to sepsis or septicemia, it is uh, near 20%. And diarrheal disorders usually don't kill in immunocompetent, but in case immunocompromised, it also contributes to mortality by 10%. Next slide, please. So what are the package of advanced disease management in children having uh, below five years? And uh, package, um, we know the package means a group of, uh, I mean, a full package means all aspects to be covered. Uh, not only we'll think of the HIV, uh, but we have to give comprehensive health care in these groups. And this comprehensive health care means a package. So what happened? Because why we are giving this package and all, there are some studies going on all over the world. And we'll see in 2017 guidelines focuses on providing enhanced package of prophylactic diagnostic therapy intervention for those starting active advanced HIV disease. So see the 2017 guideline and WHO, it is there. And there's a study by Remstead and reality study was done. In Remstead's study, they only included the older children, older children more than 18 years. Other. So the adolescent only one, 18 to 19 is the adolescent group. Only one year has been included in that study. And it's an adult study totally. But in reality trial, there's a 4% of the participants were five to 17 years. So there are children who are above five years, not even the below five years and contributed about only 4%, that is at 72 out of 1,805. And I received the same package of prophylactic intervention as the adult group. So evidence on this study and all management, advanced disease, especially related to children, but this study not limited to the less than five years. So there's no study done for the uh, what package should be given in the less than five years. 
So children should be offered advanced disease package. So we have seen the what are the causes of mortality and morbidity. So when we'll think of the package, we'll also think of that causes which are, um, increases is doing a mortality and morbidity in children. So in package, those things will be covered. As we said, pneumonia, sepsis, TB, diarrhea can cause and severe malnutrition will increase the mortality. So in a package also, uh, it will cover the whole aspects of pneumonia, TB, bloodstream infection, diarrheal disease, and malnutrition. So how to assess, how to monitor, how to treat, and how to prevent all aspects to be covered in a package. No randomized control trial has included in children to determine optimal package of care for advanced HIV disease for children, especially below five years. An intervention screen, like uh, we say, stop AIDS, it's the acronym STOP. S um, for the screen, T for treat, O for optimize, and uh, P for prevent the AIDS. So screen the older precipitating factors or which can kill the child, then I have to screen it, diagnose it, and you have to treat it. And of course, they optimize the drugs and doses and other uh, nutrition and uh, supplementations. And of course, uh, prevention is the ultimate. So we have to prevent the AIDS by giving uh, uh, Vaccine preventable uh, can be vaccine preventable diseases can be prevented with vaccines, nutritional supplementations, and other uh, supplementation when as when required. Next slide, please. So basically, um, those slide is very small and all. It's very difficult to see for all. Uh, that is a stop is written here. Um, screen taste. Uh, optimize of P for prevent AIDS. And what are the things will be screened? Uh, we have to screen for pneumonia with the babies having pneumonia in a subsequent slide. I'll explain this. So this is a pack, full package uh, for the children living uh, the HIV in below five years. And uh, there are different components are there. You have to screen for bacterial pneumonia. You have to screen for tuberculosis. You have to take diarrheal diseases or dehydration. You have to uh, screen for the severe malnutrition or any infection. Then, of course, if the children is more than 10 years or adolescent, then you have to screen for the cryptococcal disease. But less than 10 years, um, if there's a sinus, signs and symptoms of meningitis, then only you have to screen for cryptococcal in, uh, disease. Otherwise, it is very rare because there is some study in African countries, they have shown only seven per uh, lakh uh, um, Adolescents can have a cryptococcal disease. This is not common below 10 years. So we usually don't screen uh, until unless there is some pointers is there of cryptococcal infections. Then we'll screen for the malnutrition, uh, like the criteria we will this will be discussing. Then and treat, uh, then again, uh, after uh, screening, then T, uh, the T of the acronym stop is the treat. Then you have to treat accordingly, then optimize the treatment. Then P for prevention, prevention in the bacterial, you have to give profile of antibiotic to prevent the bacterial infections along with the pneumocystin pneumonia by cotrimoxazole. In case of TB, we'll give the INS prophylaxis therapy. In case of cryptococcal meningitis among the adolescents, if it is less than 200 WCD4 count, and sometimes it is when it is less than 50, usually we can give uh, fluconazole uh, preemptive th therapy. And in case of uh, um, other infection like pneumococcal infection, uh, measles, BCG, rotavirus, all those by prevention by vaccination. And these vaccinations are uh, by given by the government of India free of cost, but there are few vaccinations which can be added with this national immunization schedule. Next slide, please. So a screen for the tuberculosis. Uh, so first you have to screen by uh, the clinical science and you know what are the uh, symptoms of for screening for the tuberculosis with the baby is having cough of any duration fever of any duration with the baby is not gaining weight or lost weight or baby is having any hysteria contact so first you have to screen according by the uh, asking the question to the mother then you have to see the child examine thoroughly both systematic and uh, physical examination both uh, and systemic examinations then if it is there anything is positive, then go for the investigation. And in investigation, again, we have a good flow, flow chart and algorithm. So in that case, you have to do, and this is very important in the era of national tuberculosis elimination program, we must diagnose with the nucleic acid test, that is the rapid molecular diagnostic test, that is CVNAT, uh, from the available sample, like from the sputum, which may be induced, which may be by after um, spontaneous production or gastric aspirate or any other extra pulmonary sample, if it is uh, possible to collect the sample from like lymph node aspiration and uh, acetic fluid 
or pleural fluid uh, or CSA, we can go for that. But uh, we know the CVNET can, uh, till now, CVNET can, cannot be used for uh, testing in case of urine, stool, and sweat or blood. We don't do it in the blood or urine or stool. Any other body fluids can be uh, used for the uh, CVNET. And even the tissue can be used for the CVNET also. The, for the, you need the tissue crusher. Uh, and there are some um, machine is there in the CVNET where it is available. And so he can uh, send this uh, tissue in a normal line and then they crush it and they uh, test it with the CVNET. So, and there is an, another um, investigation, lateral flow um, urine live uh, you know, menon, that is TV lamb, uh, the lamb in urine can be tested where it is available, but it's still not in the uh, program. If available, uh, uh, still not available, when it will be available, we can use it. Okay. So, um, excuse me. Of this, which do you want to continue? This will stop. Um, this will stop other screen sharing. Do you want to continue? Hello? Hello? Yes, ma'am. Uh, there is a, uh, one uh, written is there on the something. This will stop other screen sharing. Do you want to continue? Uh, should I uh, click the yes or no? Yes, my, okay. Click here. Okay, uh, then initial assessment of screening the triage. So what is triage? Triage is a quick screening. So when patient comes in our OPD, what uh, we do as a medical officer or uh, any uh, person with there in an ART center, we have a care coordinator. So in a care coordinator also can uh, screen few things. So quick screening will be done. Whether, uh, what are the quick screening? We know uh, the, what are the problems the baby can have emergency like, uh, uh, as I said, pneumonia, diarrhea, convulsion, uh, septicemia, uh, all those things. So first thing you ask whether the baby is able to drink or breastfeed. A breastfeed baby, whether the baby is sucking breast or not, if baby can uh, feed from himself or, or mother can feed the child or the baby is taking the feed or not. So it's very important. Second is the lethargy. It's very important. But the baby is active, playful, you may uh, jolly well see baby is not having septicemia or anything. So lethargy, unconsciousness, very important. <coughs> Second, the vomiting. If he um, gives food and uh, each time babies vomit out. So yeah, this is very important because baby is not getting any fluid and nutrients. Is there any abnormal movements? That is a convulsion, whether baby is having convulsion or not. Is there any, any audible respiratory sound? Not only strider, I would rather say it may be grunting, it may be... Who is also say so any audible sounds is there? Baby is not playful. Baby is having abnormal movements, vomiting, not drinking. These things can be assessed by the care coordinator or whoever in the. For this, you don't need medical officer only. So anyone can screen for this. Then if it is there, then you can send it to the medical officer who will rule out why there is baby is not able to drink either or feed whether because of some technical problem is there or really baby is sick or not. Then screen the child for severe acute malnutrition again. Uh, and then severe acute malnutrition there are some. You know, Severe acute malnutrition, there's some criteria. So when you say the severe acute malnutrition, for this, you have to see the edema, both feet, and uh, you have to keep your phone. That will be, I think that will be dealt by Dr. Anju. I'm not going in detail. So how to see the edema in the uh, both feet. It should be both, uh, edema in both feet of nutritional origin. And if you see the weight for height or if baby is less than two years, then you have to see the weight for length. Uh, with the rest is the minus three standard deviation. Less than minus three standard deviation, then only you say severe good malnutrition. Or mid upper arm circumference, when it is less than 11.5 centimeter or 150 millimeter, it is I, I, with any of the complication. Because if these are the uh, above three criteria for the diagnosing the severe acute malnutrition, but severe acute malnutrition with complication or if there is the inability to um, take food, then only a baby should be admitted to so any of the following complications. What complication? Medical complications. With anything, whatever we discuss, like pneumonia, diarrhea, convulsion, lethargy, uh, the, um, audible respiratory sound, all those things, that is the medical complications. And Or if there's no medical complications, but baby is not taking food. Poor appetite is one of the important criteria for admission. So not able to finish the ready to use therapeutic food or whatever the food baby is not taking. If mother is complaining, if baby is unable to take food, that is also one of the complication and baby must be admitted. Or if there's any breastfed child, if there's any breastfeeding problem. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. 
Okay. So additional signs look to look for. For pneumonia. So pneumonia, uh, the most important sign will be the first breathing. And first breathing, then if the baby is quite young, the first breathing is, is still can say the baby is having pneumonia. You don't need to uh, see the chest syndrome. But in the older age group, if there's a first breathing and or chest in drawing. If there's a chest in drawing, it may be subcostal, it may be intercostal, it may be suprastinal, anything. It's very important. And if it there, it, it indicates pneumonia. Infants, so when you see the first breathing, there's a criteria. Two months to five, one year, one, one to five years and above. So two months to one, to one year is the, if the more than 50 or more uh, respiratory rate per minute. In case of one to five years, it's a 40 or more, and more than five years, it's a 30 or more. So there is a tachypnea. A tachypnea is an important sign of pneumonia. Then you see the chest in drawing, or sometimes the chest in drawing or head bobbing. The head is moving up and down, and that may be due to the uh, hunger, uh, hung, uh, ear hunger. That may be the sign, uh, and that may be uh, blueness. You will look for the cyanosis or maybe the drowsy. That that may be the feature of hypoxia. So first breathing with anything, uh, chest in drawing, head bobbing, um, lethargy can be there. Then in case of severe dehydration, again, there is a, a big confusion in case of malnourished ch child and uh, because HIV, all HIV children usually have a malnutrition. So if in severe mal malnutrition, there will be a sunken eyes, there will be a star skin targets will be lost, already lost because the no subcutaneous fat and all. And so it is difficult to um, differentiate whether the baby is having dehydration or not. But sunken eyes, if mother says, is further sunkening of eyes since morning. If take it granted, babies have a sunken eyes and dehydration. Skin pinch goes very slowly in a well nourished child, but in a malnourished child, it is already will be it is very slow. So uh, that won't give any help. But uh, skin targets assessed by pinching is you know uh, in the anti abdominal wall in between the um, umbilicus and the uh, uh, iliac spine in the middle. You just take the and all the walls of the abdominal just uh, pinch it to the fingers and release it and it will take more than two seconds then it is delayed but it may be present even in the severe malnutrition style without dehydration so it is very important the sunken eye second is the urine whether the baby is passing urine or not is very important the low urine and history of loose motion you take it is granted the baby is having dehydration in a severe uh, malnourished child and if there is no severe malnutrition, then it is easy to judge the severe dehydration. Then, of course, always look for the temperature. The surface temperature is raised. If, uh, in your, uh, when it comes to the at center, you have a thermometer, see it's more than 37.5 degrees centigrade. You can um, level the high temperature. And in case of, again, in meningitis, or in, in the younger child, they don't have the features so like neck stiffness, below one year especially, they don't have features of so neck stiffness, or, and uh, baby will be sick only. Maybe lethargic or might have a con um, convulsion. Sometimes you might get the uh, bulging anterior fontanelle. And in case of bulging, even when the baby is cry and all, then uh, anterior fontanelle will be bulged. So always see the child in a sitting posture. And when baby is calm and quiet and palpate the anterior fontanelle, which is bulge and pulsatile, which may indicate there's a raised intercranial pressure, provided that anterior fontanelle is so open. We know anterior fontanelle will be closed by, uh, let us by 18 months, it is 9 to 18 months, it will be closed. So if it's more than two years, then you won't get the bulging or anterior fontanelle. So a neck stiff in the older children can get the neck pain, headache, fever, vomiting, and neck stiffness. But in younger children, you won't get all the flooded pictures, only septic, uh, sepsis or lethargy may be the feature. Next slide, please. Okay, now uh, a screen for um, severe malnutrition. I'm not going in detail because next session is on only the nutritional part. But edema, both feet, as I said, wait for height or length less than minus 3 SD, mid upper arm circumference less than 11.5 uh, uh, centimeter, or medi any medical complications like uh, diarrhea, pneumonia, sepsis, and or no, or not able to finish the food, a baby does not have, but not sucking the breast milk. That means the same with complications there. And this baby must need admission. Okay, next. So when baby less than five years comes in your, um, in your center, first care coordinator will look for this. Whether, as I already said, the, uh, they will screen for the tuberculosis with a cough of any duration. As the um, algorithm says, cough of any duration, fever of any duration. But 
free minded because in the childhood is there's lots of causes of fever and cough and that cough and fever may vary with the season with the local uh, geographical distribution of the disease and that particular disease in that geographical area so it's very important if you uh, go on uh, screening all the ch uh, children who are having any cough of any duration fever of any du duration you are overestimating, over investigating. So it is very important for the medical officers to rule out the other common causes of cough and fever. Then you will consider whether it is it could be tested for tuberculosis or not. Because uh, even upper respiratory tract infections, any viral infections, like in COVID, like in a dengue, uh, urine tract infections, uh, like uh, in type where is it a prevalent dengue or uh, typhoid, any, any any sort of any viral hepatitis and uh, during falls and spring so any type of the, this can cause a fever so a medical um, uh, officer will examine thoroughly from head to toe as don't forget to examine the child from head to toe it's very important and then do the system examination try to uh, rule out other causes if you won't get any uh, cause then only you will send it for the investigation then poor weight gain is very important Provided that the weight is recorded properly in every month, if it is a weight, uh, weight, poor weight gain, or baby is not gaining weight, or baby has lost weight, that's also important. And history of contact with tuberculosis. It's, this is also very important, but always ask the history. We should not miss in, uh, in your busy schedule that is there any history of tuberculosis in the, uh, in the uh, family members of any form not only the pulmonary or open case, any form of tuberculosis in the last two years. Sometimes what happened, the parents say, oh, that was finished, six months ago, the drug was finished. No, even if it is finished by six months back, but by definition, it is within two years. So you have to take it granted, it is a history of contact positive. So you have to very precisely have to ask, if you have the last two years, if you have the last two years, if you have the last two years, if you have to ask, very uh, important. So if there's no history, then you can set the negative. And if it's a positive, then go for the algorithm, how to investigate for the tuberculosis. Then uh, next thing is, is okay, four is size enough there, then care coordinator will send it to the medical officer. Medical officer again immediately check whether baby is very sick, sick or need emergency care. So the, in a, oh, that is a triage. In the triage, we'll see whether baby needs emergency care or uh, special care or uh, care. So they will send the patient in the uh, intensive care or, or, or you'll send the patient in OPD or you'll send the outpatient department or you'll have to admit the patient. So that is a quick um, trial, quick uh, screening you'll do in the OPD, uh, in the first contact with the patient. So what are the things we'll look for? It's very important. Baby is drinking or not. That's the first question. Baby is eating or So you always ask whether able to drink or um, suck the breast milk or not. Or, but she is maybe sucking everything and uh, drinking or eating and immediately vomits out. This is also very bad. But there are any abnormal movements there or not? Then you have to establish with that abnormal movement is convulsion or not a convulsion. Then with the baby's lethargic, unconscious, or playful, active, and all. And any audible respiratory sound, especially strider in a calm child, then there's some obstruction of respiratory or obstruction all. But it, it may be wheeze, it may be a grunting. And in, if it does a grunting, it may be pneumonia. In wheeze, it may be asthma because they are very much prone to, this age group is very much prone to de develop asthma or viral triggered wheeze. So these things to be um, see in the OPD. Then you have to um, examine the child and count the respiratory rate and respiratory rate is very important to count when it is uh, baby is quiet don't count the uh, uh, respiratory rate in a crying child it will all it will be always high so um, make the child comfortable if, if possible then uh, can, um, ask the mother to sit and keep the uh, take the child in her lap or she can feed the baby also so make her comfortable then you count the breathing others it will be increased and you can have a false impression there's a first breathing of course or there's a sunken eyes, then examine the skin pinch, uh, fever, or if it's there or not, you just have to check the fever. And of course, always check the uh, neck movements. Uh, neck movements, uh, there was a stick neck, uh, stiff neck is there or not, or the pain in the neck sometimes may, may not be stiff, but there's a pain. Or any frontal is open, then see if there's a bulging or not. If anything is there, any danger sign, or any, any whatever I've enumerated, you immediately send the patient to the pediatrician or nearby hospital for hospitalization, because all these are the signs of danger uh, underlying disease. Okay, next uh, slide, please. So after checking, okay, there is no danger sign, no TB, um, uh, 
four is then it'll, they'll see the any malnutrition is there again the same uh, uh, as i've already discussed the, whether severe malnutrition is there or not then you have to look for the um, anthropogenic measurements and edema and if sam is there then baby is taking food or not if at all baby is having all those symptoms are and not taking full immediately referred for the hospitalization if all those things are not there that means baby is no, having no danger signs baby is not having forest uh, forest screen is negative sam is not there then Medical officers' decision will be the uh, children is the fibers without any dangerous and severe illness like pneumonia, active tuberculosis, diarrhea, dehydration, and SAM. But clinical stage is three or four conditions. Then you look for the uh, what is the clinical staging? Staging the, the child. This is three or four conditions. Then the CD4 is less than 200 or low CD4. If, they, if baby says a new case, you won't get these things. CD4 and all. So in that case, you see what are the complications the baby is having, why she has come. And what is the staging? Then, uh, uh, of course, you if in new case you won't get the unsuppressed viral load. If it's in a treatment failure or re-entry in the after lost uh, LFU, then you will get the CD4 and viral load and all those things you might get, but you may not get all those things in LFU patient also. But in case of a treatment failure, you will get all those things. If it's not there, then go next slide, please. If it's not there, then you give the standard package up here. If any of the um, uh, danger signs, any of the complications, 4 is positive, any of the 4 is, or any of the danger sign, or there's a SAM, then you give the advanced disease management package. Otherwise, you give the standard package up here. There's a slight difference between two. Uh, and the standard package up here, in treat and stabilize the active opportunities infection and SAM. So uh, ERT is not an emergency. But uh, the complication of SAM is an emergency. If you lose the complication, if you miss the complication of SAM, you will lose the child. Uh, similarly, uh, similarly, in um, pneumonia also, you have to treat, you have to give oxygen, antibiotic, as um, depending upon the saturation level and all. So you have to treat the pneumonia first, or if the SAM, then uh, the uh, acute complications um, of SAM, and then the person introduction, of, uh, gradual introduction of feeding, then you will start the treatment. So stabilize the child first. Then, uh, of course, you have to, as the, the child is less than five years, you, know, you have to start the cotamacy prophylaxis. See the response with the uh, um, management of complications and uh, adding quarter gel. Then you counsel the child and the caregivers about the preparedness of the ERT and, uh, of course, about the nutrition. Then you have to start the nutrition ERT before this. And if there is no TB, you have ruled out the uh, there is no forest springs negative. Then you have to start the um, INS prophylaxis therapy for children who are above one year of age as per national guidelines without any, if, even though if there's no history of contact, but below one year, you have to have a history of contact, then only can uh, start the IPT. And of course you make sure before discharge, not only in this patient, any patient before you make sure that baby has received age appropriate vaccination or not. So any missed vaccination that must be completed before discharge. And of course, you have to do the intense follow up. Otherwise, you won't be able to know how much you have done for the patient. What is the effect of that? So it's very important to have an intense follow up. But if in case of advanced disease management package, you have to give the initiation the same with the initiation of cotriminal prophylaxis, treatment of opportunity infections. You have to stabilize the child and you have to start rapid initiation of ERT. But again, in a rapid initiation, you have to stabilize the child. See, the child is accepting the food orally. There's no active severe infections. If it's not in failure, then you will start the INH if there's no tuberculosis, uh, contracted tuberculosis, even though uh, no tuberculosis infection anywhere, and babies above one year, then you stop the IPT. See the response, and then you have to start the ART. If, because it is very important to start the ART before discharge. When the patient is admitted in the hospital, the receptive power of the, uh, they are in a receptive mood. Both the parents and the care, uh, children are in a receptive mood. So it's very important to counsel. And at that moment, if you counsel, they'll receive, they'll, they'll follow you. So it's very important to counsel them about the nutrition, hygiene, uh, uh, how to um, make the food with the nutrient, with the rich nutrient, how to start the ART, how to monitor the ART uh, side effects, and all those, whatever you will counsel in during hospital stay will be more effective than if you do after discharge. Because in a, when they are in the hospital, they are in a receptive mood. So it's very important to counsel them, prepare them, and then uh, start ART before, at least seven days prior to uh, discharge. So that uh, you can see even side effects also. Then you uh, discharge, make them empowered to take the ART. 
then of course we have to see the uh, whether the vaccination schedules are complete as is appropriate vaccination were given or not or any extra vaccination can be given um, either by uh, arranging from the hospital or some donation or if by the their own cost then of course the intense follow up to be done next slide please so this is an intensive case finding in tuberculosis uh, on the fourth symptom we have already discussed the current cough fever for any duration but current cough there are lots of causes of current cough it may be even if there's a choking smell there after baby will have a current cough over two to three days if there's an upper respiratory tract infection there will be cough cough <coughs> so it's very important to rule out that then fever of many causes if even then i mean even there's a cellulitis somewhere baby will have a fever if there's a uti baby will have a fever if there's local prevalence of malaria baby can have a fever so any fever if you go on um, investigating for tuberculosis it will it will um, waste your time and uh, of course the resources also so be uh, rational which patient i have to send for the investigation for tuberculosis so we have to examine it thoroughly then poor weight gain or reported weight loss history of contact with tb i have already explained is there or not according to that will flow uh, if there is uh, anything is positive we we'll go for the investigation and uh, according to the investigation we will establish whether tb is there or it's not tb or you are uh, it is not um, there's infection or some other disease but not tb so you have to uh, treat accordingly and if there's no um, assess if there's no tuberculosis or no forest sign then uh, assess for the um, uh, whether babies can be uh, initiated INH or not. For that, you have to see any contraindication. What are the contraindication? INH hypersensitivity, any peripheral neuropathy, or any uh, jaundice, so hepatotoxic drugs are, uh, causing jaundice is there or not. Then, if it's no contraindication, then you can start INH. And if it's a contraindication, then you have to defer till it is over. Screen TV regularly at an each and each and every visit, you have to uh, ask this for a symptom and you have to follow this algorithm. Okay, next slide, please. So clinical features of pulmonary, it may be pulmonary TB, it may be the extra pulmonary TB. So not only cough, fever, or failure to thrive and weight loss, maybe there sometimes we might get uh, the lymph node enlargement. I have seen just now few case patients with so the lymph node, only for lymph node enlargement, and they're ignoring it. So always look for the exam, you know, ask, then look. You have to examine the patient thoroughly from head to toe, and you'll get if there's a lymph node enlargement, is there or not? If there is a lymph node enlargement, what is the site? What is the number? What is the consistency? Whether it's matted or not? All those things you have to examine thoroughly. Then see uh, any headache is there, neck stiffness is there, in any confusion or any other the history of convulsion or not? Because in tuberculoma, they might have a convulsion. Then any bone uh, TB, in your case of bone TB, you can have, a, especially in bone TB, a spinal TB can be have a gibbous and all. So there may be a backache, joint pain, a spinal debility like gibbous can be there. And so if you only examine, you might miss. Uh, the, then of course, in case of um, uh, plural, uh, plural uh, efficient because tubercular plural efficient, you might get a uh, pluritis, which is a pluritis thereafter efficient. In, in the stage of pluritis, you'll get a chest pain. As soon as there's a collection of fluid, the chest pain will go. So <coughs> there may be history of chest pain, uh, tightness in the chest and respiratory, because of the rapid collection, there may be respiratory distress also. So you have to look for that. Might not be a fever, cough, or uh, might not be uh, any history of cough or failure to type, but there is a chest pain and a tightness and respiratory distress. So always look for this. Then uh, whether any abdominal distension is there or not, uh, or there is any abdominal pain or irregular bowel habits, something on constipation on uh, altered altered with the uh, loose motion. These are all the some pointers towards the abdominal tuberculosis. Or there's any swelling, any discomfort. If you examine, there may be doughy feeling or any um, uh, tightening or any uh, uh, I mean uh, you know, visible intestinal movements and all. We can get it with the clinical features. So it is very important to see the other findings while dealing with uh, the child and uh, before uh, excluding there's no tuberculosis. Tuberculosis can uh, involve any system, any part of the body. So it's very important, not only the pulmonary, extra pulmonary tuberculosis should be ruled out. And of course, in all the cases, we have to search extensively of the contact, the TB cases. Next, uh, after clinical evaluation, we'll go for the um, XHS. 
and sometimes you have to go the not only access just you can go for the uh, other like uh, you know, sometimes you might do um, usg you are in confusion you can do the usg also but in the, as a protocol you must go for the access test and in an x-ray again you can have a significant uh, uh, suggestive tuberculosis it may, may not be suggestive tuberculosis and may be normal so, so what are the suggestive tuberculosis it may be a uh, hyalur lymphadenopathy if there is a miliary modeling if there's a fibrocagious type of tuberculosis the findings then you can say it's a suggestive tuberculosis but uh, you know, in a HIV child, it is not usually typical uh, presentation in X-ray. It may be a consolidation, it may be a um, consolidation of effusion, it may be a bronchodynamic type, and it may be any type. So always keep your antenna high that it could be tuberculosis, uh, pulmonary tuberculosis, but not in us. Uh, X-ray is not characteristic. Then uh, see the sputum or a gastric, you have to do the CB nut. That's very important. We have to send the CB nut. Cartridge based nucleic acid amplification test that is nucleic acid test from the samples from where we will able to collect the sample. It may be sputum that may be either by expectoration or by induced sputum or by the gastric lavage. So, gastric aspirate, gastric lavage induced sputum bronchoalveolar lavage if facility is available there you can collect the bronchoalveolar lavage uh, in, uh, for the cv net for this uh, any fluid uh, which is available you can send it for the cv net you know you have to collect in a falcon t we have to send it to the your nearby um, ntp center and they will do the cv net then gastric aspirate sampling is done in children it's very important to collect the gastric sample a uh, very ap appropriate way because sometimes when maximum time we see it is negative because of the faulty technique the first thing what we do, the first thing you should keep in mind that the baby should have a fasting for four to six hours. hours. So what we do, we will eat in the night and sleep early in the morning before getting up in the bed, we have to collect the sample because whole night baby wasn't fasting. So whatever the collection is there, it will be accumulated in the gut. So gastric aspirate sampling to be done in the early morning. It is better to have a two samples of gastric um, um, uh, aspirate through the nasogastric tube and it should be collected in a Falcon tube. So always see if there's a food materials is there or not. If there's a food materials that to be discarded, you won't uh, process. They won't process the uh, aspirate if there's any food materials. It should be aspirate only, and you have to collect very properly. And uh, if baby is an older enough or coming in the OPD, or not in the hospital, then you can ask them to um, uh, be fasting for four to six hours. Or, it is very difficult to keep the child four to four hours of fasting, but uh, if they can do, we can keep the child fasting for four hours in the OPD and then can uh, collect it. Otherwise, it is better to get it admitted in a nearby hospital, in pediatric department, and then collect it. Then, of course, if you can, you can do the TST or MANTU test now, uh, we're using standard tubercolin as adjunct tool, but uh, we don't have actually exact uh, is the two TU. Two TU PPD should be injected interdermally. And in duration is read by between the 48 to 72 hours. But two TU is not available in India. So please, whenever you write the mantu, please write five TU. Otherwise, in the um, some ways they will do the 10 TU, they, they increase doing increasing the dose of TU. But always do it a five TU. You have to write it five TU because two TU is not available. Two TU preparation is not available. So five TU PPD solution injected interdermally and see whether it's more than five millimeter or not. Then, of course, if you think of uh, um, the uh, abdominal tuberculosis, you have to do the ultrasonography. Even in chest, you can do the ultrasonography. Sometimes effusion cannot be detected by X-ray, and you have to see the by the ultrasonography. The ultrasonography for abdominal tuberculosis. And, of course, five needle, uh, five needle aspiration cytology in case of limb node. But if it's um, failed to uh, demonstrate, then you can have to do the incisional or excisional biopsy of, of the uh, sample. A fluid of for the cytology from the involved site can also be used. And in case of when you're suspecting the CNS tuberculosis, you have to do the lumbar puncture and need imaging for the CNS TB. Next slide, please. Main difference the package of care for children, uh, if you compare with the adult and um, adolescent, already I've said, in children, the cryptococcal infections are very rare. A routine cryptococcal antigen screening and preemptive therapy are not recommended for children less than 10 years of age. But if the children is having the signs and symptoms of meningitis, then other than uh, back to pyogenic meningitis, bacterial meningitis, you always look for the cryptococcal meningitis and do for the um, cryptococcal antigen test, either from the CSF or blood. It is better to do if you're doing the LP, you are having collecting the CSF, it is better to send the uh, cryptococcal antigen and CSF only. Otherwise, you can go for the blood also. Okay, next slide, please. 
So uh, now I will ask for the malnutrition. The severe acute malnutrition is common in HIV, we know. Uh, the all the HIV children, at least, in our center, at least 80 percent is have some sort of malnutrition is there. Few patients are there who are not having malnutrition, but 80 percent of some sort of malnutrition. But severe malnutrition, though, persons will be less, but it is there. So all children should be assessed for presence of or absence of malnutrition at the time of HIV diagnosis and during each visit is very important. So you have to see the weight, the height, and you have to plot the weight for height and mid upper arm circum still five years. From six months to five years, you have to see. And, so, and before, after that, we'll see the BMI, body mass index. <coughs> Excuse me. Of course, by doing anthropometric measurement. Next slide, please. Now, treatment of tuberculosis in children with living with HIV. Next, uh, next slide, please. Okay. So we, you know, we give the four drug um, combinations, uh, four drug um, uh, therapy, and uh, first two uh, months. Then we give the depending on usually we in pulmonary tuberculosis we give the six months, and uh, near tuberculosis we can give the nine, nine to twelve months, and or bone TB we give the one year. So according to that, but two plus uh, four or two plus seven or two plus ten. So on the duration will be there in intensive phase and continuation phase is there in intensive phase. You have to give the INH, rifampicin, ethamidyl, and pyrazinamide. And please see the doses is very important. Previously, a bit low doses. Now it is in higher doses. It is uh, INH 10 mg, uh, rifampicin 15 mg per kg, ethamidyl 20 mg per kg, pyrazinamide 35 mg per kg. If you see the total doses of pediatric um, age group, it's quite high if you compare with the adult because the drug tolerance is quite better, high in a pediatric um, uh, population. So we are giving the higher doses as per body, milligram per kg body weight. But there, uh, there should be some limit because there may be obesity, there may be obese child also. So what is the upper limit? That is the maximum dose, permissible dose for that particular drug should be followed. Next slide, please. And now in the recent guidelines, we know that we have a six age group, so the weight group, so that there is a good uh, compliance will be an appropriate drug doses is can be given because the, previously it was not a six. Now we have a six weight group, four to seven kg, eight to 11 kg, 12 to 15, 16 to 24, 25 to 29 and 30 to 39 kgs. According to that, we'll add, add. And the three drugs are in combination, one drug to be uh, given separately along with the paradox. Next slide, please. So, uh, we know uh, after starting a uh, uh, new case, we have started the tuberculosis uh, anti tubercular drug, see the uh, tolerance of the drug, where we have tolerated the drug. And always uh, it's better to ask the mother with the color of the urine, because otherwise, you know, the baby is consuming the reformation also, that the combination drug. So, is there any change in the urine color or not? That's a good um, indicator for compliance. So, look for the baby has taken the ATD and it has tolerated, then you have to start the. Uh, ART. If less than, uh, it is as um, uh, simple as previously, the same guideline is there, uh, less than 20 kg and below 6 years, uh, uh, baby is uh, um, um, 6 to 10 years or above 10 years, that the three category of children are there. So in less than 20 kg and below 6 years, we will start with the Avakavi, Lamibudin and Lopinavir, Ritonavir. But if you, as we are giving ART, um, ATD, Rifampicin, for the rifampicin, we have to have a, because it's rifampicin enzyme inducer, so we have to have super boosting with the ritonavir. And so the ratio should be, uh, previously lopinavir ritonavir ratio is a 4 is to 1. But if you give the rifampicin, it should be 1 is to 1. So you have to add ritonavir separately. In case of 20 to 30 kg or ages from 6 to 10 years, both should be and, not or. Which should be either 20 to 30 with the uh, age 6 to 10 years. Then we can add uh, avacabi, lamibudin, and dolotegravir, and extra dolotegravir after 12 hours. This should be kept in mind. Weight, I mean, about 30 kg, about um, 10 years, then the um, FDC is there, uh, 10 to 12 lamibudin, dolotegravir, single pill, the additional dose of dolotegravir after 12, after 12 hours. That should be given. That, okay, next slide, please. Next slide. Uh, the TV, uh, why we are adding uh, uh, ritonavir uh, for. Uh, no, with the repumption based drug, because we know that there is no study for repumption in um, pediatric age group. I think in some repum between um, uh, uh, procurement is also difficult, not available. So, um, so we have to give the repumption and lopinavir ritonavir. Then you have to give the ritonavir uh, high because the repumption suppresses the bioavailability of, of boosted PI. 
because of the enzyme induction. And uh, rifamycin and if anti effective TV de uh, derivatives of rifamycin group does not inhibit the effectiveness of the drug. So, rifamycin is not available, then FDC hence should be provided as a loose drug. If it's available, you have to give the uh, separately. Subject, it is not, it cannot be given enough FDC. Subject the rifamycin with the rifamycin for the entire duration of anti TV treatment in such cases. Anti TB initiation should be done as soon as the TB is diagnosed, even in patient with the PIBCRT. No need to delay. If already in ART, then you have to uh, uh, diagnose the uh, uh, child as a uh, suffering from TB. Immediately you start and optimize the dose. Replace the rifampicin if it's possible, uh, especially 150 milligram. But in pediatric, we do give uh, rifampicin with uh, uh, super boosting one is to one ratio. If rifampicin is continued for longer duration, this will make the boosted PI regime ineffective and has in the emergence of drug resistance mutation and eventually ART failure. So it's very important to have to keep in mind because now rifampicin is, uh, has an immense role for uh, preventing the drug resistant uh, mutants. Next slide, please. TB treatment in children living with HIV on 40 years inhibitors, as I always said, is uh, above uh, six years. If it's every six years, then we go for the switch over to the dolotogravir. If it is in six years, then we have to give the lopinavir, ritonavir, and the ratio will be one is to one. Okay, next slide. So uh, I don't know why it is uh, in, in, given in a uh, child living with it, five, less than five years, pregnant and lactating women. Uh, so, okay, so all the primary NDTB are safe during pregnancy and lactation. It should be continued. So baby can take the breastfeeding according to the uh, uh, consent and the protocol. You have to counsel the parents. The baby should be given um, uh, breastfeeding even if the mother is having ATT. Except in case of the resistant, if mother is suffering from resistant tuberculosis, then only the you have to think of the alternative uh, milk. Single line injectables are not contraindicated throughout the pregnancy. Use of fluoroquinones in pregnancy can affect the cartilage damage, so you cannot use fluoroquinones. Ethinamide is contained during first 30 weeks. beta and dilamine is the best avoidant in pregnancy yet to uh, have some uh, study. Shorter oral beta uh, containing MDR-TB regime cannot be administered during pregnancy. And with the ART, DTG, if a penis continuing regime is safe in pregnant women. Okay, next slide. So now uh, we screen the child we um, saw the, uh, is there any complications or not? If it is there, then we will treat the child. So uh, screen, treat, next the uh, optimize and prevent. So uh, what will you optimize? Optimize the AT, uh, anti tubercle drugs, optimize the ART, optimize the other supplementations. The rapid ART initiation within seven days of diagnosis is the priority, but children who require hospitalization for severe malnutrition, TB meningitis or other, any, uh, other disease like pneumonia or any other complications, you have to stabilize, stabilize the child first then start treatment of the of that particular complications. But keep in mind, you have to start the ART before discharging the child. This is important because you have to go see the um, um, baby is consuming. So the adherence will be good. Compliance will be better. And the acceptance will be good if you start in the hospital period. And then you see the side effects and then discharge. Initiation of ART is encouraged as a part of child's hospital admission. Ensure linkage. This is one of the important aspects after discharge. So you always make it sure that baby is linked to the some nearby or preferable uh, center. Okay, next. Now, prevention protocol for cotomancial desensitization. Okay, according to uh, age group, we do uh, 2 ml, 4 ml, 6 ml, it will gradually increase if there's a hypersensitive cotrimoxone. Okay, next slide. CPT. Uh, CPT is given to all children who are exposed to HIV, so below 18 months. So any all HIV exposed children who are below 18 months, it should be started from the six weeks of, of his age and it will be continued up to 18 months. At the 18 months, it will be decided whether the baby is positive or ne negative. If baby is turned to be positive, it will be continued up to five years without any interruption. So from six weeks to 18 months, whether positive or negative or exposed, it, it should be continued. At 18 months, you have to decide during this period, baby is turned to be positive or negative. If positive, you have continue up to five years. If negative, then you cannot stop it. But if negative, then see how long baby was given breastfeeding. So if baby is taken breastfeeding, then also till six weeks after, three months after the breastfeeding, you have to continue and then stop. But after, if positive five years, after five years, at the age of five years, you decide 
whether baby is in a stage three or four, or they are having a CD4 count less than 350, you have to continue. Till the baby is in a stage one or two, or CD4 more than 350, for two consecutive tests done at an interval of six months. <clears throat> then only can stop. <coughs> so all HIV exposed infants should be started and children are regardless WHO or CD4 count percentage positive up to five years or HIV infected children above five years, you have to follow the adult guideline. And of course, in case of secondary prophylaxis in PCP, after completion of treatment, you have to give the PCP, the, uh, sorry, uh, the cotrimoxyl and will be continued according to the uh, previous guideline. If less than five years, you have to go, uh, continue up to five years to continue. If more than five years, then you can see the whether baby in the stage one and two or CD4 count more than 350 done at an interval of you know, six months uh, consecutively. Then we can stop the cotrimoxyl. Okay, next slide. <clears throat> now the cotrimoxyl profile axis to be started from um, six weeks and dose is given. 1.5 ml, 5 ml, 7.5, 10, and 15. You don't have to remember if you the, uh, keep this chart hanging on your labor room or in a newborn care or in, uh, in your OBT. See the chart and give according to it. Okay, next slide. So uh, indication of IPT in children, I've already said if they're more than 12 months, means more than one year, uh, and 4 is negative, there's no signs of active tuberculosis, you can start the IPT uh, with the uh, pyroxyl phosphate uh, for 10 mg per kg for 6 months, but less than 12 months. In case of less than 12 months, you have to have a history of contact. Either mother is positive and tuberculosis is ruled out in the children, or the any um, vicinity, the child vicinity, anyone who's positive, baby has come in contact with a positive a positive person, then you have to give. Otherwise, you don't have to give. Without any history of contact positive, we don't give the uh, INH in below one year. And then, of course, before starting at um, IPT, always look for the contraindications. Active TB disease is not a contraindication, but not as a profile access. You have to treat. So uh, along the other drugs, you have to give the IPT, uh, uh, INH. If there's active hepatitis, if there is a signs of symptoms of peripheral neuropathy, if there's an hepatotoxicity, or if there's a case that baby has completed drug resistant tuberculosis, there's no point in giving INH. There you have to have levofloxacin. So in a resistant tuberculosis, you cannot give the profile axis INH. <coughs> Excuse me. And dose is given in a yeah, but actually a 10 mg per kg. But if you see the age wise, weight wise, it is given. The half tablet, one tablet, one and a half, two tablets, two and a half, and three tablets according to the weight band. Next slide, please. Now, I think this is all about my sessions. And uh, if there's any queries, I would love to answer. Otherwise, it will be uh, next session will be taken by the doctor and you said. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, any questions from the participants? Kiran, can you please give mic access to all? Participants are requested to please unmute themselves so they can even uh, type in the chat box. They can type their questions in the chat box. Excuse me, madam. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Now, my question is uh, you advise that uh, two morning samples, early morning samples uh, of gastric lavage should be collected. Yes. Assessment. It is, the, it is for the same sitting or it will be on two, two different days? No, at the same uh, same uh, days actually, and if you if give the NTAP guideline, it is in between uh, uh, one to two hours. But uh, what we do, you cannot keep on um, keeping the baby on fasting. No, so if you do it in uh, one sample, then after few, uh, one hour, you can do second sample. Same day, same day, not in the uh, subsequent day. Previously, it's in the first, second day, call in, call in the second day. Cap can be uh, one hour. Yes. Between two samples. Yeah, two samples. That will be LD will be high. Because one sample that it may be a negative. Okay, thank you. Uh, excuse me, ma'am. You said contraindication PLHIV who have completed DRTV treatment. Yeah. So, but now the guideline says even in those patients PLHIV who have completed DRTV treatment, also sometimes we recommend IPT in those cases also. Actually. Okay, uh, I got you two questions. Actually, in DRTV, DRTV, drug resistant TV, it may be multi drug resistant TV or XDR TV. So, multi drug resistant or XDR, you consider there's a refumpicid resistance and INH resistance too. 
So because uh, you know the INH is always much more resistant than the refumbation. So we see only refumbation resistance is there or not. So if it's a resistant, there's no point in giving the INH policies. That particular case, you have to have uh, in NTP guideline. There's no guideline in HIV also. Uh, of course, in NTP guideline, they says give liver flux as a prophylactic therapy, not the INH because it is already resistant. Okay, so you can. Think of giving levofloxacin as Yes, the latest, latest NTP says you give the levofloxacin. And second thing you say, giving IPT in children where they are living with this person who is uh, TB positive, who is TB but not ready to spread. It's not an open case. Is it, is it so? How do I, could, I couldn't get it your question, sir. So first part of it, when you are saying to start IPT in a child. Haan, below one year or above one year? Below one year. Okay. Hmm. So below year. Is, Haan, is the person who is, who is on treatment. No, no, I couldn't get it. You mean to say when you start the IPT in a below one year, in fence, you mean? mean yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. In, it should be very clear. Infants are with the mother. Okay, yeah. so if mother is having active TB or not active, mother, mother isn't taking ATD, yeah. mother is a positive. So you first rule out the is the baby is suffering from TB or not. But yes. in, and in the newborns and young age, usually we know that if it's a congenital TB, though rare, but of course we look for because congenital TB is baby has acquired the TB in the intrauterine period that should be in the through the umbilical cord. So that means right. it will it will be involved the liver. Okay, yeah. so there'll be hepatitis. Similarly, then we have seen few, two cases for my lifetime, only congenital TB is not, not that common. So you have a hepatitis megaly with the granuloma, the granulomatous changes, and it can have a lung function. Lung. So you have to rule out the active TB in infancy if there is a history of contact, means mother or any other members who are in the contact with the infant. Got it? If there is no TB in the child, then you have to put the INH prophylaxis for six months. That I is rule out TB first and then to start IPT in less than one year also. Yeah. Above but one year, contact, above the defense is... The huh. TB case. If it is in contact with the active TB case. Yes, sir. Actually, in above one year, below one year, the only difference is in above one year, without any contact, you have to give if there's no TB. But in below one year, if there's a history of contact and no TB, then you have to give. This is the difference. Okay. Yeah. Above one year, no contact, still we have to give it. Yes, yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Any more questions from the participants? Participants can now unmute their mics and ask questions. Hello, madam. Yes. Uh, uh, history of contact with tuberculosis, madam. How long ago can we take it as a contact? Yes, sir. Years, five years or... yeah, yeah, very good question, sir. Very uh, right question. Uh, by definition, according to the Indian Academy of Pediatrics, I'll say the rationality why definition has been taken. By definition, uh, the any adult person is suffering from uh, any form of tuberculosis. Then actually, it should be open tuberculosis, but we take in HIV any form of tuberculosis so that we can um, uh, encircle many cases. So any form of tuberculosis suffering from, just listen my word, suffering from any form of tuberculosis or ha has suffered from any form of tuberculosis in the last two years. Clear? Means, as I said, sometimes they say, oh, I have finished long one year back. So there's no history of contact. No, as it is within two years, so it, it should be taken as a Okay. Contact positive because okay. it has been seen uh, that uh, the AB runs in a family or vicinity in the in it, in ninety percent cases in a, within two years. They, if there are, there's no disease but any form, then it will do, go off or okay. don't become dormant and, and it's not going to spread it. So by the uh, studies, it has been evidence based. It is okay. evidence based. So it is, it is taken as a two years last two, two years. Year. Okay, yeah. madam. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Anyone? I don't think there are any questions now. Okay. Yeah. Uh, sorry to inform. We are unable to conduct the next session that is nutritional care for uh, children living with HIV. We'll have this session uh, whenever the facilitator is available. Uh, the post test will also be taken uh, at the end of the next session. We'll soon inform you the dates. For now, the next session is on 8th of August, that is Monday. And the topic is care of CLHIV post ART initiation. The next session is on 8th August, Monday, and the topic is care of CLHIV post ART initiation.
ma'am we can yeah. come to the session now yes thank you yeah thank you so much ma'am thank you okay thank you for uh, patience hearing and giving me this opportunity thank you thank you ma'am ma post poll uh, post test we'll take it with the next session sir thank you to all the participants for patient listening we we'll end the session we have a session tomorrow also no no sir it's on 8th now 8th of august doctor, monday dr munjal dr munjal is starting tomorrow isn't it uh no sir uh, I, tomorrow is the again. session that we were last time on august 4 i think last month uh, it didn't work out and we got to the internet problem that session is posted for tomorrow uh i'll i'll call you separately sir i'm not aware of this but i'll call you separately i've got a mail sushil munjal is talking tomorrow same time Uh, I'll call you separately, sir. I'm not aware of this.